What's up, my resin monkeys? Okay, there seems to be a recurrent theme in my videos where I come on to the camera, say I'm really sorry about getting a video really, really late. So I'm gonna change that. I'm not sorry. Uh, I have decided to take upon the philosophy of Blizzard Entertainment when they were preparing to launch for about 10 years the Diablo 3 video game that everybody was waiting for. Every time someone asked, when is it coming out? Blizzard would always say, it's gonna be ready when it's ready. So that's what I'm gonna have to do now. Mm -hmm. The last time I was here, I promised I would give an updated tutorial on skin tones. And that's exactly what I'm going to give you in this episode. All right, skin tones is a very, very tricky thing to do. A lot of people like different types of skin tones. And well, I have my own personal liking, but I decided to do a complete, okay, I'm not gonna say complete, and I'm gonna say almost complete skin tone tutorial. Why I say almost complete? Because I'm not gonna be using certain brands of paints because I wasn't able to get them or they're, <laughs> it's just too much. So I am going to present you with the most known and used brands of paint for skin tones. All right, so first of all, I need to explain that skin tones divide into two different undertones. One is red, one is orange. And I am going to divide this tutorial into undertones and into types of paint, meaning lacquers and acrylics. So we are going to start with the most basic of the basic, which is acrylic. Now, this is going to be a little hard because my eyes, <laughs> literally, see something and it all doesn't always translate what I see onto the computer and onto your screen because we all have different you know settings on our screen so every time there's going to be like a skin tone where I might have trouble conveying what it looks like in person I will try to illustrate that with a known character of whatever anime series that comes to mind that looks you know, that if I would paint a figure for that character, I would use this type of paint to emulate the skin tone and so on and so forth. All right, we got a lot to cover, so we're gonna go fast, but we're also gonna go slow because I'm going to make this as most idiot proof as possible. Mm -hmm. First on the list, you got your regular Americana craft paint brand. This is great to use as your base color as it's not exactly ivory nor skin tone, it's just something in between. But you can also use it as a paint for a very pale character, uh, let's say you like your run of the mill Rei and Ami, or whatever really pale character in anime you've seen before that looks like Rei and Ami. Right, we got Americana's Flesh Color. This is my favorite color to use until recently. It's a very nice color, it's not too dark, it's not light, and it's great for anime characters in general. These two colors belong to the red undertone division that I mentioned before. Cool thing about these two colors is that you can actually use natural buff as your base tone and then use the flesh tone to shade the skin and you get a very, very nice result. All right, moving on to solvent-based paints. These are acrylic paints, but they are solvent-based, which means that the brand will usually have like their own thinner. It's water-based, but it has like more stuff in it that I really don't know what it is, but. And these would actually be Tamiya and they would be Vallejo. Yes, not Vallejo. Cool. Okay, Tamiya. Let's talk about Tamiya. Tamiya only has one fucking skin tone. And it sucks. 
It's too orange and way too dark for normal anime characters, but would probably be ideal for very tanned figures. Let's move on to Vallejo. Oh, let me tell you, I was not expecting this brand to have a complete plethora of tones and colors. I just had to sit down and study them because I've never actually used this brand before. So let's start with the red undertones. This is a very similar color to natural buff. I would definitely use this as a base color or even a standalone if you want a really pale tone for your kit. Flesh is a little bit more darker and a little refined. I could definitely see this as a main color or even to shade the previous light flush. Basic skin tone is not that really basic. It's even more darker than the pale flesh. I would definitely see this used to shade the previous two tones. Unless you want a really dark tone and that's your thing, then go for it. Salmon Rose is way too red to use as a base color. I would also see this used for shadings any of the three previous colors. Now the cool thing about all these colors is that it gives you a lot of opportunity to mix and match between them, letting you create your own personal and unique combinations of these paints and thus giving you a shit ton of possibilities. On to the orange undertone colors. These look more similar to the colors used in PVC figures. The industry tends to use orange instead of red to paint their fabricated figures. So if that's your cup of tea and you want your figure to look like a PVC, which personally I would find it insulting, but that's just me. But if that's your cup of tea, then hold on to your panties. We have again a light flush. But this is from their Vallejo Mecca line. It's very pale, definitely can be used as your base color. I would honestly just use two layers because if you add more, it can turn very dark and not in a good way. Skin tone is much more orange in tone and darker. Just as a red undertone skin tone, try saying that 10 times fast. I would also use this to shade the light flesh we just saw if you want to create a delicate shade for your kid's skin. Cadmium is definitely not a color I would use often for skin. I could possibly see this to create a tan skin color, but I would be very conservative in using it. Flat flesh is definitely that. It's flat. But as far as the color goes, it's quite dark, but definitely more inclined to use this for tan skin. Between this one and cadmium, I could definitely use them either or to create tan colors or simply shading these colors in between. Over me, you lock me up. Don't wanna leave. Now, their elf skin is nowhere near what you would imagine an anime elf looking like. Elves are always depicted looking pale and or fair skin, so this is way too dark for that. However, I could use this for the dark elf if you add a little brown to it. You could totally use this for a character like Pirotes. Okay. This part might freak some people out as much as it freaked me out. When I bought these paints from Vallejo, I realized that the, the undertone wasn't even red or orange, it was yellow. This was totally new to me, and I honestly didn't know what to do with it. The only thing that came to my mind when I was spraying this color onto my sample piece was hepatitis! This is Sunny Skin, somewhat light, but still dark. 
I could possibly use this to shade a light skin tone, but I can't see this being used on any particular character. But hey, that's not for me to, to say, and that's for you to find out if you want to use this for your character. Dark flesh took me aback. This was so damn yellow that, honest to gods, the first thing that came to my mind when I saw this was definitely not using this for any skin application on my personal opinion. And lastly, medium skin tone. It's not medium at all. What is it with these paints? Dear God! This color is basically a sunburnt, if you ask me. So I would possibly be using this as a very conservative shading color for tan skin, if at all. In the end, this video was to show you a guide to a variety of skin tone colors for you to personalize and mix according to your liking, because when you see a bottle in front of you, you don't really see how the paint actually looks like until you use it. And then maybe you realize that you made a mistake in purchasing and regret it and spending your money or thinking that you should have bought a different color. I also want to make a footnote here. While I was looking up the colors to purchase from Vallejo, I saw that there were at least four lines of paint. They are Vallejo Model Air, Model Color, Game Color, and even Mecha Color. Several skin tone colors were the same in all four lines. So if you want a good guide on which color to choose, go by the number and then just pick the line that you like best. Of course, this is not for all these colors, but some. And there you have it. These are the most common acrylic paints that you can use when you're just using, you know, water-based stuff. Because honestly, using lacquer, it requires a whole different type of equipment and even the space where you're working on, but we're not gonna, you know, talk about it right now. I'm just saying that there's a big difference between using acrylics and using lacquers. So I hope you, you know, got the gist of it. I hope I was able to cover the most of the colors that I was able to possibly get. And at this moment, I really want to appreciate and I want to thank all my patrons. Like, like there are a few of you and I haven't really been active on Patreon for the last year and a half or so. And I felt so bad about it because I wasn't uploading any content. But still, I mean, there were some people that continued to support me. And I want to thank them because if it wasn't for your donations and, you know, your support through Patreon, I would not have been able to purchase all these Vallejo paints. That I personally don't use. I mean, I, I don't use Vallejo for skin tones. I mean, I use it for something else sometimes, but it's not my main go-to paint. But I know a lot of people have more access to it. There are different types of paints that I wasn't able to acquire because honestly, I think this was enough. Um, I think this gives you the whole gist, as I said before. There's another brand that people use a lot and it's Citadel. Um, there is a sh hobby shop in San Diego where they sell Citadel and I obviously can get it online at a more, you know, higher price. But I thought this was a good way to start. Like this, this, like this variety of paints is a good starter for you to decide which one you want to use depending on the application that you want to do. If you guys want to actually, you know, know what's going on with me commission wise or any type of news that I might have, not exactly for YouTube, but just my activity in general. I mean, I might be not so active here, but I'm really active on Facebook. I'm also active on Instagram. I have a Snapchat, but I don't use it that much because I honestly don't know how. Mm -hmm. You can also follow me on Twitter. I mean, I have a, I have a Twitter account, but I use it more to like retweet stuff from my favorite sculptors in Japan and stuff that I find really interesting. I don't tweet that much because, you know, that's what I use it for. And, uh, but if you want to follow me there, you can DM me, you can tweet me, you can do whatever you want. You know, just like Facebook, I, I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm a fucking matrix. So if you want to follow me, the links are down in the description. I'll see you later. Bye.